Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith, and today I'm going to show you how to make salmon fish cakes. But before we start, quick shout out to my new Patreon fan, Matthew Shaw. Hello Matthew, and thank you. Much appreciated. Right, the hat is back. Last week I wore the hat and I, I conducted a little poll on, on the video, which was Shakshuka. And uh, the results are in, and here we go. Drrr, drum roll. 42% every now and again. 30% always. 4% no, nay, never. And 22% it's up to you, Keefe. So, that is a clear majority for now and again. <laughs> so I think I'll reserve it for when I'm having a bad hair day. So I'm not going to wear it today. Oops, bad hair though. Hang on. See, many of you may have doubted whether I actually owned a hairbrush, but I do. Anyway, uh, I just never use it. <laughs> right, salmon fish cakes, lovely, simple and delicious. And the reason I'm doing it is because uh, the other day I was at the supermarket, Morrison's, and found this huge tray of salmon trimmings for, um, well, two pounds a kilo. And this huge tray was just over a kilo so that's an absolute stonking bargain and they are good bits of salmon and absolutely perfect for fish cakes and if you enjoy this video give it a like share subscribe don't forget to hit the little bell icon so you get notifications and without further ado let's do it right the basic ingredients for your fish cakes are potatoes that's 600 grams salmon about 500 grams a handful of fresh parsley, the zest of a lemon, a teaspoon, maybe half a teaspoon of dill, and a teaspoon of capers chopped. You'll also need breadcrumbs and stuff for coating them. If you've got any leftover mashed potato, that'd be perfect, but um, if you haven't, you have to make some. So I'm going to do that first because that needs to cool down. And when you peel your spuds, you want to chop them into bite sized chunks. Try to get them all the same size so they cook more evenly. And chuck them in a pot full of water. Pop that on the stove. Bring it to the boil and then turn down the heat and let it simmer for about 10-15 minutes until the tatties are tender. So just test your spuds for doneness by prodding them with a fork. If it goes in easily, they're done. So we drain those and let them stand, let, let them kind of steam dry while we get on with prepping the fish. So these bits of fish, they're actually, they're brilliant. Really good solid chunks there. So all we need to do is um, get rid of the skin. Because that's not good eating. Well, it can be if it's crispy, but it won't be on this. <laughs> and we've got chunks like this that's really fatty. And as you probably know, the, the fat, the omega-3 in um, salmon is fantastic stuff, really good for you. And um, there's plenty of it in this, so that's good. I'm just going to pop a tea towel under the chopping board to stop it slipping. And now we want to slice this quite finely. Well, not, not too fine, but enough <laughs> whatever that means so i'll set that aside for a bit and get a different chopping board and knife and wash my hands because raw fish cross contamination very very bad don't want it <laughs> and also um I, you know i'm bound to get some chefy type saying you should have different colored chopping boards well yes in a restaurant kitchen you should guess what this isn't right chop a low parsley See, we do speak French in this kitchen. I'm going to chop some capers as well. I love capers, so this, you know, just give it a bit of, a little bit of zing. Right, now we need to mash it all together. So, uh, get rid of those. Pop the spuds in the pot. with 
teaspoon of salt. Well, a bit less. And we'll see how it goes. Normally when I mash potatoes, I would add butter and milk. But for fish cakes, you want it quite dry because otherwise it won't work. <sighs> Couldn't get fresh dill. Don't matter. <laughs> so, teaspoon of that. I love the taste of dill. It's really goes really well with um, well, fish and salmon especially. Pop the parsley and the capers in. And start mashing. It's going to need some liquid. I'm going to pop some milk in. That's better. I think that'll do. Now I'm going to add the salmon and the zest of the lemon. If you've got waxed lemons, you want to wash them first and roll them about your worktop to kind of break it down because we don't really want wax in our fish cakes. And now just fork the fish into the mashed potato. Ugh. These are going to be fabulous, I think. Now we're ready to form our pancakes. So take a good old spoonful and pop it into a ring. And I've, I've got this uh, baking sheet with greaseproof paper with some flour, <laughs> so that, that just for them to sit on temporarily. I've seen a recipe where uh, they suggested that you bake these things, and um, really not. No, 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 no. So make as many of these as you can and, and then stick them in the fridge for about half an hour to uh, firm up. So the fish cakes have had a nice good rest and now we just need to finish them off and crumb them. Crumb them. <laughs> Usual arrangement, flour, beaten egg and breadcrumbs. These are my homemade breadcrumbs, so some of them are quite large. I'm only going to cook four today, but uh, I'll, I can freeze the others once I've crumbed them. Now we're ready to cook the fish cakes. Da, da, da. So I've got plenty of oil in a frying pan. You know, you want at least, I don't know, a centimetre, half an inch. And on low heat. Because the fish cakes have got raw fish in them, you want that cooked all the way through uh, before the breadcrumbs on the outside start to burn. It's a bit tricky. So once the oil's heated up, place the fish cakes in and just let them sizzle for, I don't know, five, ten minutes and then turn them over. This oil is, uh, it's just sunflower oil, nothing special. And when they're golden brown all over, they're ready to serve. And now it's Mrs. Keith Cooks <laughs> with Taste, Taste Test Time. time. <laughs> I'm fired, aren't I? No, it's wearing the you hat. It overheated it. Will you? Please. Mm, Anna gave me those. Oh. So, oh yeah. Did you tell them about the uh, the other salmon that we had during the week? Um, well, I mentioned that I'd used half what I've got. Excuse me, I'm hungry. Yeah, we made these um, salmon pasties. Oh. No, salmon on crude. Sorry, <laughs> salmon on crude. <laughs> but it's, it's less intimidating. You can make your own and call them salmon pasties. They were mm, gorgeous. Mm, mm. Oh, as are these. Mm -hmm. That's exactly how I was going to phrase it. How long have we been married? Ten minutes. Hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm. Oh, that's comfort food. That is. Mm. I don't really go a bundle on fish cakes in the normal way of things, but oh yeah, definitely. 
sure you guys can see. You can see the pink of the salmon in there, it's lovely. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh well, I'm relieved that the salmon's actually cooked. So we probably won't die as a result of eating this. That's oh, good to know. Mm -hmm. Was it in any doubt? Well, they were big thick chunks. Ah, right. I could have cut them smaller, possibly should have, but um, this has worked. Beautifully. Oh, I think it's nice to have a fish cake that's got some proper texture, as opposed to just being some sort of patty. Mm. Well, um, yeah, I think we can say this works. Mmm. What have you said? <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. So, can we do the whole Arrivederci, ciao, tara, tutu? No, all of these before is. they get cold. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. And see you next time. Well, make a witty comment. Hey? Oh, I can't do that. I'm just going to eat.